Hey there, and welcome back to Factorio Tightening the Belt Mega Base Guide. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me. Uh, we are back here, and what we're going to work on today is actually a beacon moduled green circuit build. Uh, we don't need to actually place it yet, but I do want to work on it because we're kind of in that stage where we need to start developing builds for the uh, you know higher level of base here. Uh, I do want to show off a little bit of changes I've done here from the last stream. Um, so this thing is working pretty decently. Uh, there's almost 200 modules in here. Uh, green circuits are really the main bottleneck, but we did upgrade them. So what we've done here is uh, when you put productivity modules in circuits and wires, it becomes very close to one to one ratio. Not exact, but it's close enough to do a, a one to one here. So what we did is we removed this middle third wire assembler and we put a beacon and then we put beacons in between here. Uh, now this obviously is already a beacon module design, but it's not what we want to use uh, in, the, in the final stages of things because there's nowhere near enough beacons. But we did beacon that uh, and we, are, we did blue belt some of it. I ran out of some parts, but uh, we are doing decently. Uh, you know, blue circuits are actually backed up. Red circuits are the bottleneck due to green circuits, uh, but overall things are going pretty good. Plastics backed up. Everything's going decently. We uh, cleared out some biters as well, found a little oil, some more iron. Uh, I thought that was coal for a second, but it's not. And uh, and things are going decently in the base. We also knocked out another productivity research. So, you know, we're now on productivity. Uh, we have 62% productivity. Uh, but let's go ahead and work on a circuit build. So uh, I'm going to grab some more beacons. And uh, if I can, I'm always, I'm, I always look in the wrong part of the base. <laughs> this is what I get for just doubling my science is I always look in the wrong section of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's grab some beacons. Now, uh, I actually do probably want to get, well, we are, we already know. Well, no, we actually do need to do some calculations to figure out how much is going to fill a belt, which uh, I, I actually completely forgot about that, which... <laughs> I probably should have done the calculation beforehand, um, but I do want to show it with you guys on camera if if I can do it correctly. But let's go down here and get some more prod modules. So again, we're going to do the one-to-one, -one, the, the direct insertion one-to-one um, -one ratio because of the modules. Um, now, some people may be wondering why we're doing direct insertion. Uh, and I think I've mentioned this before, but just to kind of strengthen the point, um, even without modules or beacons uh, moving copper wire for green circuits via belt is uh, typically a very bad idea um, throughput wise it's just a pretty big problem uh, you can use bots we're not obviously building a bot base so you know that's kind of out of the window anyways uh, but direct insertion for something like this especially when you're beaconing and moduling it is pretty much required uh, in my opinion uh, because at the speed at, at which it's doing it, you just, I mean, your belt just can't do it um, for, for how much you need. Okay, so, uh, but we're going to run into a few little snags here uh, initially, which I already, like, have an idea of how to fix, but uh, I do want to show you. And I'm just kind of coming over somewhere a little bit of a clear area here. Excuse me, trees. You are right in the way. Um, somewhere over here is good. We already extended power out this way anyway. Let's go ahead and do it down here. So... What we need to do, first off, is we need to take a machine and we need to get its speed. Um, now, I know um, just from practice that the speed is going to be uh, 9.4, I believe. Or maybe it's 5.4. I actually probably don't have a clue. <laughs> uh, so this is why we need to do this is to get the actual speed. We don't, the, what you put in here doesn't change the speed, but we'll do that just so we kind of all know. Um, there we go. So it's going to be... It's still increasing. It's 5.5. 9.4 is the furnaces. Um, so it's 5.5. Okay. So what we need to figure out is how many circuits are we going to be getting per second, right? Because then we then we can take that and figure out how much we're going to need to fill a blue belt. Okay. So what we do is we take the output amount from one craft, which is one, right? Get one circuit per craft, unless I'm just like really dumb. Let's double check. Yep, you do indeed. <laughs> you get one circuit, okay? And then what you do is you divide this by the base craft time of the circuit, which is gonna be 0 0.5 seconds, right? 
Okay, and then we multiply this by the craft speed of the assembler and then multiply that by the productivity amount, which is 1.4 because it's 40%. And uh, now if I actually do calculate this, divided by 0.5 times 5.5 times 1.4. So 15.4, and this is a per second rate. Okay, so we get 15.4 circuits per second. And, and this is why, I mean, this is ridiculous, right? Um, this is actually a wire, which we don't actually want to use for this example, but 15.4 uh, circuits per second, okay? Now, for a blue belt, we know a blue belt moves 40 items a second, and that's both sides. So each side moves 20, which means that, really, unless I'm just absolutely, like, really out of it, uh, that means that we can only really, like, like two and a half of these is going to supply a blue belt, essentially. That seems ridiculous. 40 items a second, 20 per side, because 2, 15.4 times 2, you know, is 30.8. Uh, if you do a third machine, which you kind of have to, because, you know, if you only do two, it's not going to be a full belt. And if you do, so you need to do the third. You could make it, like, less speeded uh, if you want. Uh, we could just do a third and it just won't work all the time. We do need to make sure, though, that it inserts onto both sides of the belt. Uh, so this is actually... For some reason, I had it in my head that this was going to take a lot more assemblers. Uh, so, okay, that's a little, that's a bit interesting because uh, <laughs> this all this is going to need iron, and then it's also there's going to need to be copper. So, what I want to demonstrate primarily for you here, though, is when you do direct insertion. So we could do it two ways. We could do like this, right, and this would be the cable. But the problem here is you're you're losing beacon efficiency because each of these assemblers is not hit by both side by beacons on both sides. You know the top is only hitting here and the bottom's only hitting here. Okay, now you could do this and direct insert this way. But the problem with that is when you put a space in between these assemblers, it throws off your staggering of your beacons, like it it messes up the coverage of them so that you don't actually get the full speed. So if we do this here just to show you. Uh, you can see uh, once this actually, well, we would need the rest of these, but even even as it is, even with just these, you can see this is 3 and this is 2.3 uh, because of, of how these are set off. If we were to move this next to it and then throw these in, this one would be 3 as well. So that's why that's a little difficult. So what we do here, and this is the same type of thing you would do for like yellow science where you need to direct insert the cable in. Uh, what you can do is actually uh, like offset these a little bit like this actually a bit more than that game okay so what you can do is do something like this and then we'll put another one here like that okay because now what can happen is these see so this is barely it's barely but it is hitting both of these assemblers and there's no space in between each one so your staggering is not going to be thrown off okay so of course it helps if i actually put the beacons down correctly in the first place but <laughs> uh yeah so these guys got a little bit wonky now the real the real challenge here is going to be actually getting belts in here because we need quite a few belts into here we were getting attacked there for a second uh, so these are all going to be about the same speed here if we just throw this guy down. They should all go up to 5.5. Uh, it would help if I also put speed modules in the last one. Okay, so 5.5, 5.5, 5.5. Okay, so there we go. Uh, now, then, so then what you do is how you pass these wires through. If we take stack inserters, which I seem to be lacking. Oh, no, here we go. Uh, then what you do is you can pass them through chests. So you can do something like this. Something like that. Or you could do it up here. Uh, of course, now this becomes a bit difficult because, uh, you know, you're running out of room for your belts. Uh, so this is where this is this is as far as I had planned in my head. So now we get to work on this together and figure out how in the heck we're gonna do this. Because we need copper 
to some of these now and, and the other thing is you can't bring these beacons back anymore because then you're gonna lose the coverage on both so this is like pretty much as spread out as you can make it uh so we need man how, how do we do this i may have to actually take a whole different approach because we need an output belt for the green circuits but then we also need an iron input belt and then we also need a copper belt input for the cables so let's actually run down i want to grab a little bit more undergrounds and such and we'll uh, we'll figure this out together and why, why am i showing you this on camera is because uh this is this is part of what goes into a mega base uh you know and my sending support is to space thing i did a lot of the builds almost all of the build design off camera to save time uh in some people were kind of upset by that, which I can understand. So this time around, I want to show you these designs as I'm doing them. And there's going to be mistakes, all right? If you're expecting me to do this perfect the first time and you are, you're, you have very uh, misconception, uh, you have big misconceptions with uh, expectations because um, that's not going to happen. You know, this is, it, it takes, it takes experimenting. And that's part of the fun. That That's what I love about this. So if we, let's just say, for example, we need to, we need to have our pass through inserters. Let's just say we do this, we do this and we take some boxes. The real question is then how do these get resources? And it looks like it's going to be not really doable because there's no way for these to get copper. This one can get copper, uh, but this, this one, this one can't. Uh, we would almost have to move. I've actually, I haven't paid attention. Like when I've been in Mojo's base, I haven't paid attention enough to his circuit builds to actually see how he does this. Now these don't have to be fully, I mean, we could just do that. We could go the really easy route and just do that and direct insert and then, uh, just compensate, you know, cause they wouldn't be as fast. So you would just build more of them to fill about. We may end up doing that if it's. I mean, it would be way easier, uh, honestly. But we'll we'll see what we can do here. So, okay, well, let, okay, well, let's let's work on the iron. Okay, so if we bring the iron like this, we will need a third one of these. That did not work as expected. Wait, why is that? Oh no, because I want another underground. Duh, idiot. <laughs> um, okay, so if we do this for iron, one of these may not even be fast enough. It should be. Uh, and then we also, so then we need, then we need copper. And that's where this gets very tricky because we have to yeah th there's like no way to really do this because the way this works is i mean we pretty much have to do this there's no room up here and if we do that then there's no way these can grab copper uh there's still a way to output the circuits because we can do a belt here but in terms of how to get copper in here, because normally you would just do the same thing, right? You would just do like this or something. Uh, but then, then it won't work. And you can't, we can't use long-handed. They're just, they're not fast enough to do that, unfortunately. Like if we did this, you know, go through and do like a long-handed and then to there. It's not, you. it's not going to be fast enough, trust me. There's no way that's going to be fast enough to move the items in between there. Which is unfortunate because this would actually work. It's just like, yeah, it's just barely, barely in the way. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could do this. That's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I would rather just do the, the other build like this than to do that. Uh, so actually, I, I am curious how much... Let's see how much iron we need. Uh, we kind of we do the same type of calculation, but just kind of the other way. 
so we don't factor in the productivity this time. So we know that we need one iron per craft. It's gonna need it every half second. So we then divide one. I'll type this out for you guys again, but it's pretty much the same thing. We do one divided by 0 0.5 uh, and then multiply that by the craft speed of the assembler and not productivity because the productivity obviously affects the output. I mean, it kind of affects the input, but you see what I mean? So that times 5.5, .5, which means we need 11 iron per second equals 11. Okay. Uh, and then, so the problem here, because what I was debating is like, if we do, we, what if we did like half iron, half copper? Uh, but the problem is that even two of these assemblers is going to take more iron than half of a blue belt can support because half a blue belt is going to be 20 items a second. Uh, and then this one is going to take, it's actually close to a one-to-one. -one, so this one will would take about the same amount, but again, it's more than half of a blue belt can take. Uh, which is a bit of a problem. Unless there's some way to like, unless, um, unless, unless, unless we can, is there any way to output? Oh, we could output here. Well, maybe that's a solution. Cause if we, well, no, not really. No, cause you, you can't, <laughs> cause there's no room. Oh my goodness. Uh, we almost need to like swap these things. I don't, I don't think that, I don't, I don't know that there's a way to make this work, guys. Uh, so if we, if we, if we were to swap this, so that's not there, and then this outputs here, could output there. Uh... So this guy comes out like that, but then this, but then again, there's no way for this to even get iron, this one. I mean, you, you could belt weave. I mean, you could do somehow like red belt, but you know, there's not even room for that. This is certainly a bit of a dilemma, I must admit. Doing this with belts is, uh, it's, it's quite, it's quite complicated. Weaving these in and out of here. Cause we're going to get a full belt of circuits out. So we can't even share iron or copper on a circuit belt. I feel like I'm just missing something super obvious, but I really don't think so. It's just, uh, there's like, there's like no way that this, uh, that this works, I don't think. Okay, so what if, what if, what if we did this? Let's change plans here a little bit. If we did this, what would this speed be? Let's get the rest of the modules in there. Get these in here. Game. Better let me walk. Okay, so the speed here is 4.87. And we may just have to work with that. There's not really a problem with that. It's just going to take a few more to fill about. Uh, so same type of thing, you know, one divided by 0 0.5 times 4.875 times 1.4 is gonna give us 13.65 per second if we, 13.65, so if we divide 40 by 13.65, uh, we're gonna need just about three anyway. So this is actually better. I, I didn't even need to goof around with this anyways. I'm just uh, somewhat dumb sometimes.
because <laughs> uh, this is just, uh, this is going to be way easier, maybe. Uh, doing this may actually break something, because this one's now faster. Yeah. We almost need this, like, if we want these all the same speed, we have to, like, put a space in here, which is kind of annoying. Uh, yeah, because if you put these right next to each other, then this is going to be faster, which really isn't that much of a problem. It's just, oh, well, it's still faster, though. What? Oh, it's because I didn't put the... Oh, well, maybe it would have been the same anyway, you idiot. <laughs> oh. Okay, it is, so we can't actually do that. Okay, well, then let's just, uh, let's do that. So this is kind of what this would look like then. I should have probably done this from the beginning, but I would have preferred to have the other method. And also, all of our beacons are wrong here anyways. Um, in fact, all these speeds are wrong. It's still going to take like three. But. Okay, so I'll do that, do that, and then just get some more power here. Okay, so it's 5.5. Okay, so what, so the problem here, so the cables, okay, so when you, when you do it like this, so that is then a problem. That is in fact a problem then. 5.5, 4.25. Hmm. 5.5, so they alternate, and this, yeah, so that's the problem I was running into, is some of these are going to be faster than others, which is not great at all. Yeah, because see what's going to happen is this one's fast, and it's going to overproduce for this, which isn't that big of a deal, but the problem is in this one, it's faster than this one. I mean, we could, we could swap them. I mean, you could do that, which isn't great, but we could do that. I'm curious, if we move this over, 4.25. I mean, these are just going to way overproduce, really, is the deal. Although, usually, although, I remember I said it's not quite a one-to-one -one ratio, and that's because it was actually short on cable. But with these being faster, it wouldn't be. These are going to be 4.25, which means that my calculation may actually be off a bit. What was it? 4.25 times 1.4 is 11.9, so 40 divided by 11.9. So we actually need more than three now, which is what get, where it gets really annoying, <laughs> is because now, now we need four and the last one's barely gonna work at all, is, is the problem. So this is kind of, Oh, not that way, this way. So that's kind of what this is going to look like. So we would need four now to fill a belt, uh, and one just won't work as much. I guess that's okay. Uh, and then we can just have two insert onto each side. Uh, now, in this case, the beacons don't need to be nearly this close. Uh, we can move these out more, which would allow much more belt room. And I think that's what we're going to do, guys. I mean, four, machine, four uh, circuit machines for a blue belt, uh, you know, eight machines total is not bad at all honestly. Uh, so I think we may go with this, and the belt should be super easy now, because uh, the direct input's just boom, boom, and then, you know, you can run, like, copper, iron, or something. These can scoot out too, output, and you'll be good to go. So I think this is what we're going to go with. I'll refine it for next episode, but this is kind of the trial and error process we go through for this, and uh, I, think, I think this is going to work. I mean, we needed three anyway, even when they were as fast as they could be. Adding in two additional machines isn't great, but I mean, it's not that huge of a deal. It's still only eight machines total for a full blue belt of 
green circuits, which is still fantastic. Um, so I think we're going to go with this. That'll do it for this one. Uh, you know, if it wasn't your thing, I apologize, but uh, I still think it's really important to show this stuff off because this, this is what a mega base is. You know, you don't just instantly get designs, you know, just done unless you're just taking them from other people, which I guess you could. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of kind of what has to go into it. And I didn't show them last base, so I'm showing them this base. And uh, and this is what what it is. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. Leave any thoughts and, down, and questions and such down below. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.